Cyberspace is the new nervous system for the world. By virtue of our dependency on the technologies that underpin it, we are all interdependent and interconnected. What one person, what one nation does on one side of the world can have a dramatic effect on the outcome on the other side of the world. But it's not just about the technologies. Technologies that provide us with hazy boundaries that make us a global village, it's hard to know where those perimeters are, and in fact, they do not tend to respect national boundaries. But it's also a space that we have to protect collectively for our futures, that we have to do together. It's moved on, it's not just the internet, it's a place where we worry about our well-being. And at the same time, what we see is a growth in the threat that we face a very sophisticated ecosystem of actors who together create jobs and supply chains that really threaten us. And the way in which we're seeing the evolution of these kinds of threats is getting quite dramatic and moving towards sabotage and physical outcomes. It's not unbelievable that when we imagine the Internet of Things and the future technology environments that we might see malicious nanobots attacking the very physical lifeblood of humanity. We already know that it's possible to hack physical systems and bring down lights and, and, and take down our transport systems and literally make things go bang. So how does this work? Well, yes, people hack us and they exploit vulnerabilities in very complex stacks of technology that it's very hard for us to understand how we remove such vulnerability. But you know what? They also hack us as people. They understand how to manipulate and coerce us into giving them footholds into our systems. They understand the fundamentals of human psychology that make us weak and introduce uh, opportunity for threats into our systems. And so, unfortunately for us, the solutions, of course, are going to be very complex if we're to avoid very destructive outcomes. And historically, we focus very much on people hacking systems to show off their prowess. And perhaps you could not have failed to have noticed the press in the recent years um, where we're worrying about state-level resourced actors. But you know what else? There's actually destruction happening. And so how is it that we've built systems that appear so brittle, so easy to fracture, and the fractures can have such wide ramifications? Well, in part, you know, we've, we've designed these systems so that they're, they're not designed to tolerate such malicious intrusion, whether it's from the outside or on the inside. And it's also about the problem of complexity. We have a very complex jigsaw of controls that we use to make ourselves safe and secure in cyberspace. And nobody understands the map for that jigsaw, how the pieces fit together. So where does that leave us? Well, certainly we're observing a failure of the global commons. And some people talk about the need for deterrent. But you know, there's something very asymmetric about this threat too. It's easy to focus on the well-resourced actors. But you need to remember that the cost of entry to deliver cyber attack is very, very low. The cost of accessing cyberspace is very low. And even in today's world, we are very porous. We have holes in our protections. We still don't know how to deliver cybersecurity in these very complex environments. And when we look to the future and the solutions of how we're going to feed the planet and how we're going to understand the challenges we face in climate change, I can tell you that we're not going to scale up. It's not clear who's going to pay, who's going to build the locks of the future, who's going to help us understand how we lock our front doors and our car doors and how we come together and which cars we're sharing and which houses we're residing in together. It's not obvious. And so what we really need to understand is what global strategy should be. We have processes. We have internet governance processes. We have legalities of proactive defense processes, state on state. But do we have strategy? No. Do we know what should be inside strategy, what should be out? What we have to do together as, as a creative coalition what, what else we could do as nations. And I put it to you that in order to, to really address this, and we have an opportunity, we need good science, broad science. We need to come together. We need to share. In a world where we're so scared of sharing what's happening to us, it means that we don't have the data that our scientists can engage around. So as we move forward, we need, really need to be brave. 
And in order to have brave policy, we have to have new coalitions that bring our policymakers together, our champions of cyberspace together, and also the scientists, so that we can get these insights that will give us new options for the future. Thank you.